it has begun. The Republican Party is now gearing up to cut Medicare and Medicaid. On Wednesday, Paul Ryan, uh, House Speaker Paul Ryan, said that House Republicans will be looking to cut spending on Medicare, Medicaid, and welfare programs next year as a way to trim the federal deficit. He said during an interview on Ross Kaminsky's talk radio show, quote, we're going to have to get back next year at entitlement reform, which is how you tackle the debt and the deficit. Healthcare entitlements such as Medicare and Medicaid are the big drivers of the debt. So we spend more time on the healthcare entitlements because that's really where the problem lies, fiscally speaking. Really? Are you sure our fiscal problems don't have anything to do with the giant $1 trillion tax cut you just gave to the rich? Hmm. It might have something a little bit to do with it. The fact that we've been cutting taxes for the rich over and over again. For example, the Bush tax cuts. Uh, and then, of course, you had President Obama enshrining 97% of Bush tax cuts into law. And then you have this new bill that gives even more tax cuts for the rich. I wonder why we're having a debt and deficit problem. When we're giving more and more to the military industrial complex, $600 billion, the Trump administration wants to increase that even more so. You wonder why we're having any sort of fiscal problems. Gee, I can't quite tell where the money seems to be going. When we're giving subsidies to oil companies and giant profitable corporations, I wonder where our fiscal problem is coming from. You understand? But no, no, Paul Ryan is here to tell you that it's not because of all of that stuff. No, no, corporate welfare is fucking awesome. No, your real problem is those people that need Medicare, the poorest of us that need Medicaid. That's where the real problem, that's where the spending is. And we got to trim that fat. We got to make sure to cut those people off because they're moochers. Disgusting, right? Look, going back to that tax cut, again, that they just started trying to pass, right? It passed the House, it passed the Senate. Now it's got to go back uh, and they got to iron out some details, but it's going to go to Trump's desk anytime now, probably before the end of the year. According to the next nonpartisan tax policy center, that bill will add about $1.3 trillion dollars to the national debt over the next decade. That, that is even accounting for any modest economic growth, which again, there's a lot of experts out there that are saying the tax cuts themselves, giving more tax cuts to the rich, they're not going to spur any kind of economic growth. You know how you spur economic growth? You actually invest in your people. You actually do infrastructure projects, which we have not done. So... Again, this is what this is what their priorities are. We cut taxes for the rich, then we have then when we have an enormous deficit uh, and debt, well, we're going to cut the programs for the most vulnerable. That's what we're doing. I mean, 1.3 trillion dollars. The Republicans are blowing a gigantic hole in the in the budget, and then they're like, "Hey, man, we're, we're going to fill that budget somehow. That hole, we're going to do so with your Medicare." Hey, what? You didn't think that this wasn't the plan? It absolutely was a plan, right? You create a big mountain of debt by giving more tax cuts for the rich and corporations, and you tell people that the only way to fix it is to rob you of your health care. That was always the plan, and I've been warning about this for years. For years. I've been talking about the Paul Ryan plan all along. You can't get this guy you can't let this guy get into power. You can't let the Republicans get into power. They're gonna take your Medicare, they're gonna take your social security, they're gonna give all that money to the rich. I didn't even mention Social Security, but trust me, it's in there. This is what Paul Ryan has been working for ever since he was drinking beers with his frat buddies in college. And Republicans and Republican voters, you gave him the means to cut it, to do this. Are you guys winning yet? Are you guys winning yet? Do you feel like you're winning? I guess. <laughs> gets worse. Gets worse. They're not just going after Medicare and Medicaid. Well, Paul Ryan has also been... Um, speaking privately with the president who is beginning to warm to the idea of slowing spending growth and entitlements. So again, uh, I mentioned that they're not just going after so, uh, with uh, Medicare and Medicaid, but before I get to that, Trump, the guy who promised not to cut Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security is now saying, hmm, 
You know what? Uh, cutting Medicare, Social Security, uh, Medicaid actually sounds kind of good. I mean, look, I know here's how they probably pitched it, right? Hey, Don, we just gave you a gigantic tax cut. Um, but now we've got a huge problem with the debt and the deficit. And you know your voters are really, really worried about that. Um, we need to do something about it. But we have a plan. See, all you got to do is just let us cut Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. How's that work out, Donald? Oh, okay. Hey, hashtag MAGA. I know, but some of you might be like, dude, he, he promised not to cut Medicare, Medicaid, or Social Security. I mean, he was on the campaign trail. He even tweeted about it saying that, oh, I was the first one, the first Republican here to say that uh, I wasn't going to cut Social Security and Medicare. Bragged about it, right? I know, some of you might have believed him. Well, I didn't. You know why? It's because he's a pathological liar. And again, he's shown that he doesn't care about anybody except himself. So here Paul Ryan comes in and says, we got to cut Medicare. And he's like, yeah. Sure, I've warmed to the idea. Ryan said, I think the president is understanding choice and competition works everywhere, especially in Medicare. You know what those words mean? Choice and competition? They're going to privatize Medicare. I'm going to give you a voucher. Here you go. Hey, what, what, like, what if the voucher doesn't cover my medical expenses? Sad day for you. Hashtag free market. Now look, those of you who might be Trump supporters, and I know not many of you watch me, right? Uh, but look, if you're on Medicare, right, do you like Medicare? Do you like being on Medicare? Are you one of the over 80% of Americans that have a favorable view of Medicare and doesn't want any cuts, right? Nearly 90% of those polled, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, wanted, have called for no changes to spending, on Medicare or more spending on Medicare. They don't want to cut it. No, they want to expand spending on Medicare. And there's a significant portion of Americans um, that's actually a, a majority now, a, small, a slim majority of Americans that are saying, hey, let's not just keep Medicare for people over 65. Let's expand it to everybody so that everybody can enjoy Medicare because it's vastly superior to private market insurance. Look, when it comes to Medicaid, too, by the way, right, 84% of people uh, who responded to this poll want no change in spending to Medicaid or increased spending on Medicaid. The American people do not want to cut Medicare or Medicaid. Like, you guys are shouting it from the rooftops, like, do not touch Medicare or Medicaid. Do not cut it. However, the Republican politicians Look, they work for their donors, uh, and the donors say, privatize it, because we can make a lot of money. Hand over uh, you know, all that money to the insurance companies so that we can get richer. That's what this is about. And Paul Ryan, he's not the only one, right? Here's some other notable Republicans that are talking about this. Last week, House Ways and Means Committee Chairman Kevin Brady said that once the tax bill was done, and it's almost done, quote, welfare reform was up next. Senator Marco Rubio last week said, quote, instituting structural changes to Social Security and Medicare for the future will be the best way to reduce spending and generate economic growth. It doesn't have anything to do with those two things. What it is, it's all about cutting your Medicare and Social Security and handing it off to private corporations. That's what they want to do. Representative Jeb Henserling of Texas Chairman of the House Financial Services Committee told Bloomberg TV that, quote, the most important thing we can do with respect to the national debt, what we need to do is obviously reform current entitlement programs for future generations. And of course, when they talk about reform, they talk about cuts. They no longer, look, tax reform, great example, right? They called it tax reform, tax reform. No, it is tax cuts, tax cuts for the rich. And now entitlement reform means basically cutting entitlements for people who are on them, people who are on Medicaid, Medicare, and Social Security. And it's not just that. Of course, they're going after your food stamps as well. So look, the majority of people that are on food stamps are, you know, white Republican voters. 
that are in red states. They're coming after your food stamps as well. They're looking at putting in work requirements and all that stuff into the food stamp program. So here we go. And finally, uh, you have Senate Finance Committee Chairman Orrin Hatch said, uh, and, and he was saying that, quote, we had a rough time, uh, he has a rough time wanting to spend billions and billions and trillions of dollars, and it doesn't even come out to that much, believe me, uh, to help people who won't help themselves, won't lift a finger, and expect the federal government to do everything. Again, entitlement programs. It, it, okay, when you're talking about Medicare, it does take a significant chunk of the discretionary budget. But you know what? That's kind of the, the cost. Things cost money. And so, yes, the American people are saying, okay, I'm fine with us using our tax money to make sure that people have health care. It is necessary. But of course, Orrin Hatch, the rest of these Republicans, they disagree with that. They're like, no, no, no. We don't want to spend any of that money on people. No, we want to take all that money and give it to the corporations. And so, of course, they're coming out with uh, and, and saying, look at all this money we're spending on welfare, when actually the food stamp program actually doesn't cost barely any uh, amount of money compared to the bloated defense budget uh, and the result of the tax cuts for the rich. I mean, again, they just voted to give trillions of dollars in tax cuts to the richest corporations. And these corporations already pay well, far less than the regular middle class families. And now we're talking effective rates, right? We're not talking the 35% rate because no corporation pays that. They pay somewhere around 22% and some pay 12 to 14%. So they're doing that. They're cutting corporation, uh, they're cutting corporate rates and they're calling you lazy. Hey, ever got a job from a poor person? So let's just make it worse on the poor. If you thought they were on their side, no, they're not on your side. If you thought Trump was on your side, he's obviously not. They're not on any side, but they're donors.